In this video, we are going to do some more subspace examples. So the example says, given a vector space V, test if H is a subspace of V. So in part A, V is P2, which is a set of all polynomials of degree at most 2. And then H is the following set. So I'll read this, and then we'll break down what it means. It's the set of P of T that are in P2. Colon means such that. So such that P of t equals a t squared plus b t, where a and b are reals, such that a plus b equals 0. So the polynomials that are in h, they have to have degree at most 2. They need to have this form. The coefficients need to be reals. And the coefficients got to add up to 0. So first on the side, let's get a feel for what things are in h and what things might not be in h. So just as a side example, I'm going to let p1 of t be equal to 3t squared minus 3t. Let's let p2 of t be equal to 3t squared minus 7t. And then finally, I'm going to let, ooh, I'm going to let p3 of t be 3t to the fourth minus 3t. All right, so for this first polynomial, well, it has deg degree at most 2. That's good. It has this form, at squared plus bt. The coefficients are reals. 3 and negative 3 are reals. And if I add the coefficients together, if I do 3 added to negative 3, that does equal 0. So this satisfies all the conditions, so it is an h. With that second polynomial, well, it has this form, at squared plus bt. It's got the right degree. Its degree is at most 2. But if I add the coefficients together this time, 3 added to negative 7, well, that does not equal 0. So this polynomial is not going to be an h. And then for this third polynomial, we might notice that ah, the degree isn't right. Like to be an h, it's got to have degree at most 2. But this one's got a degree of 4. So as a result, it's not an h because its degree, its degree is 4. OK, so now we have a feel for what types of things are in H and what types of things are not in H. Now let's test, is this going to be a subspace of V? So there's three conditions I have to check to see if something is a subspace. We got to check, is 0 in H? Is H closed under addition? And is H closed under scalar multiplication? So for that first condition, since I'm talking about polynomials here rather than vectors. I'm going to be focusing on the zero polynomial, which is just p of t equals zero. So p of t equals zero for all t. For all t. Okay, and I'm going to ask myself, you know, does that polynomial, is it in h? So first, just to get a visual sense of, well, what does this polynomial look like? If I draw some axes, p of t equals zero means no matter what number you plug in, the output you get, or the y value we get, is always 0. So this is just going to be a horizontal line on the x-axis. That's my graph of p of t equals 0. So does this have this correct form? Does this look like some number times t squared plus some number times t? And yeah, if you let both of those coefficients be zeros, it does. So both of those coefficients are real numbers. That's good. And then if I add them together, that does equal 0, like I need it to. So this polynomial, the 0 polynomial, p of t equals 0, is indeed, it is in h. So I'm going to put a check mark there. So this first condition that I need for something to be a subspace is satisfied. 0 is in h. The 0 polynomial is in h. So now I check, is my set closed under addition? Which means if we take two things that are in H and I add them together, will I still get something that's in H? So I start that off by letting, taking two things that are in H, two arbitrary things. And the things that are in H are polynomials. So I'm going to call the first polynomial P of T. So I'm going to say that equals AT squared plus B of T. And I'm going to let Q of T take some other polynomial be equal to ct squared plus dt. So I'm going to let these polynomials be in h. 
So one of the big things that that means is when you add their coefficients together, that should be equal to zero. So this means that a plus b equals zero and that c plus d must be equal to zero. And now I need to check that when I add these two polynomials together, will I still get a polynomial that's in H? So let's add them. So then if I add them, I'll get P of T plus Q of T. So adding these polynomials, I'm just gonna group the like terms together and that'll give me A plus C times T squared plus B plus D times t. So if I add these polynomials together, I can factor t squared out of two terms. I can factor t out of two terms. And so it, it has the form that I need. I have something times t squared plus something times t. These coefficients are clearly going to be real numbers. So I just got to check now, well, if I add the coefficients together, will that be equal to zero? So And if I add them together, the coefficients, I'll get a plus C is the first coefficient, added to B plus D is the second coefficient. But if I rearrange this a little bit, this is the same thing as A plus B, I'll put that into parentheses, plus C plus D in parentheses. And we know A plus B and C plus D are both zero. So we know that this is zero, we know that this is zero. Okay, because that's what we started off by assuming, A plus B is zero, and C plus D is zero. So adding zero to zero, we get zero. This is zero. Okay, so adding these two polynomials gives me a polynomial that does satisfy this condition, that the coefficients add up to zero. So as a result, this polynomial P of T plus Q of T, this is indeed in H. So I'll put a check mark there. It is closed under addition. So finally, now, is this closed under scalar multiplication? So to check that, let's let P of T be a polynomial in H. So I'm gonna let this be just AT squared plus BT. Let's let this be a polynomial in H. So what that means is A plus B equals zero. The coefficients added to zero. And now I'm gonna let, I gotta multiply this by a scalar. I'm gonna let C be a real number. And then if I multiply C times P of T and I distribute the C, we'll get C A T squared plus C B times T. So I'm hoping that this polynomial ends up being an H. And I see that it has this form, something T squared plus something times T. The coefficients are clearly reals, so I really just need to check now, will the coefficients add up to zero? So if I add them together, and I do CA added to CB, I can factor the C out, and be left with C times A plus B, but I know what A plus B is. A plus B equals zero, because that's what we started this off by assuming, A plus B is zero. So what I get is C times zero, which is zero, C times zero, which is zero. So this new polynomial C times P of T, it does satisfy this condition. As a result, it is an H. So my polynomial C times P of T, it is indeed in H. So I'm gonna put a check mark there. So because all three properties hold, therefore, this set H is indeed a subspace of P2, since all three properties hold. Okay, all right, let's do another example. So let, flip, let us flip the page here. Okay, so for this next example, again, V is P2, the set of polynomials of degree at most two. And now my H is slightly different. I have the set of polynomials in P2, such that now P of T has the form a t squared plus two, where um, there's one typo here. It says a comma b are in are reals, but there's no b in this definition, so I should just cross out the b. I just need a to be a real number. So I want to check: is this a subspace of of v or not? So first, I want to have you pause the video to try this. So pause it for about two minutes to try this. 
pause it in four, three, two, one, and try it. All right, so hopefully do that. Hopefully pause it to try it. Let's talk about it now. So if I check that first condition, let's look at the zero polynomial. So let's consider P of T equal to zero. So this polynomial, and this needs to be true for all values of T, every number I can plug in for T. That's the zero polynomial. So is this polynomial in H? Well, to be in H, my polynomial needs to have this form, something T squared plus two. In other words, its constant term needs to be two, but the zero polynomial, its constant term isn't two, it's zero. So this, this is not, this is not in H since its constant term is not two. It's not two like I, I need it to be. I need the constant term to be two. Okay, so because of that, the zero polynomial is not an H. If even one of my subspace properties doesn't hold, it means it's automatically not a subspace. Okay, so that's nice. That means we are done now. Therefore, H is not, it is not a subspace. It is not a subspace of P2, the set of polynomials of degree at most two. I would encourage you to test out the other properties for practice. It turns out that none of them will hold here. It's not gonna be closed under addition. It's also not closed under scalar multiplication. It'd be good practice to check those. Okay, so I wanna end this video though with one final quick example. So the question says, is R2 a subspace of R3? So it's really tempting to say yes to this, but it turns out that's not the case. So why is that? Well, if I think about R2, the elements, the elements have the form elements have the form, you know, vectors with two entries. So there's going to be a first entry, there's going to be a second entry. And, you know, the elements of R3, they have three entries. There's going to be an X, there's going to be a Y, there's going to be a Z. So the things, you know, the elements of R2, they don't even have the correct number of entries to be within R3. So the things, the elements of R2, they are not, they are not in, they are not in R3 at all. So, so because of that, R2 is not even a subset of R3. So it doesn't make sense to say that it could potentially be a subspace. So no, no, it's not since the elements of R2 have just two entries. So they are not in R3 at all. They're not in R3 at all. So it couldn't possibly be a subspace. Couldn't be a subspace of R3 because it's not in R3 at all. Okay, I, I wanna end by noting one thing, which is if instead I considered the set of vectors that had the form X, Y, and then zero, so if I included a third entry, but I just made it zero, where those X and Y could be any real numbers, now this would be a subspace this is a subspace of R3. In fact, this is the XY plane within R3. And I'm not gonna prove why it's a subspace. I'm gonna leave that as an exercise for you to think about. So think about why that is. Why would this be a subspace of R3? Okay, and there we have it.